<laughs> and now we're back, and we'll be real careful here. <laughs> we'll finish that later on. Yeah. Anyway, um, this is a this is a really cool tool, and if you want to see what this thing can That's do, it's a ninja star. I know it is. Oh, you could whip those. You know that? I bet you that would. Can we stick that in something? Yeah, I wouldn't try because we'll break the car and we need it for the show. <laughs> it's really expensive. All right, we'll try it after the show. But you know, it also kind of could stick it in that. It kind of looks like the fireman symbol too. Yes, it does. It does. So it's kind of. It also looks like the swastika. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the Swiss. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't want to talk about. Okay, okay anyway, right, never mind. so you'll see this in the third segment, and that's really a fascinating tool. That's right. But uh, right now we're going to dive right into what Lamello is really known for. Right. And that is the biscuit. Uh, except in, in Lamello's case, I know usually you see a biscuit joiner and it's just the mundane task of just lining up two pieces of wood for glue up. But in Lamello's case, you really are far beyond that. I'm looking at some of the fixtures over here and I'm just amazed at what you've got. Yeah, we have now um, a lot of different biscuits. Obviously we have the traditional beechwood biscuits. Our H9 is our smallest Something biscuit. Something like this? Yeah, right. Okay. These, are, these are regular standard wooden biscuits. Um, these are kind of cool. What are these? Are these locked together? Yes, that's co that's called a knockdown. That's biscuit. amazing how Simplex. you notice that. Wow, that's really neat. <laughs> and, knock look down, and look shells, at that. They work. They work, they work forward both and sides. Backwards. Wow, look at that. So it's kind of these. Good. I'm familiar with. These are for solid that's surface. Solid surface. It's translucent, so that you can't. So if you can see through the solid surface, you can't see the biscuit. Very cool. And these are hinges. Correct. Those come in black. Brass and nickel. Pretty neat, really. Left it and is really right. Sharp. So, how do you anchor these once you put them in? Do you have to put a screw in through the wood? Screws come with it. Okay. Yeah. Screw, Very good. The little screws come with it. Okay. Same thing. It, and what are th these? Are different. Those are those are uh, self-clamping biscuits that are invisible. We'll get into our newest biscuit, which it's is not also invisible. Sun. I can see it. Well, <laughs> it's invisible <laughs> when it's in here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Very good. So what you do with those is if you have a hard to reach area, sometimes people may be covering duct work or, or crown molding or something like that that you can't reach to clamp, you'll put one of those alongside two or three normal biscuits and that biscuit will hold the whole joint together oh, until while your the other biscuit so, moves. Oh, so really what cool. you're saying is you'd have a, a, you know, maybe a ceiling trim piece like that right? Yep. and you would take and you would use the biscuit joiner and you would cut your slots right in there. Correct. Drive this red biscuit up into it, yeah, and, it has reverse and because of the so uh, because of the really what are these serrations or little teeth? Yes. Because of those right there, that would go up and and really lock in place. Now you wouldn't use glue with this; it wouldn't do you any good. Correct. But you could very if this weren't melamine, let's say you could put wood glue on this surface. Exactly. And by doing this, it indexes it, lines it up, and locks and holds it all. And in holds one step. it all together because it's an area you can't clamp. Okay, and what would this be for then, this, this uh, self-locking type? This is for knockdown assemblies, okay? So you have, if you have shelves, same thing. It's made with the normal biscuit slot. It shows the diversity, the versatility of the biscuit joiner. But if you had adjoining wall panels that you wanted to be able to take down, sometimes maybe trade show displays, you want to be able to put them up, take them down, shelving that they Those want to be able to move. Those will handle the abuse of constant? Uh, yeah, they will. Okay. They're, they're glued in with two-part epoxy. Okay, oh, okay, so they're not, this isn't a standard glue that they're going to be held in with, but the slot is. There's a little tool called an insertion tool, which allows you to set the depth and center these, because these do, one of the great things about biscuits is you have a lot of lateral movement with alignment. You do, that's right. Well, with these, you need to make sure that they're, that they're centered, so you have a little tool that centers them, so, okay. they, so they lock tight. You know, back to these a minute, um, just looking at this, could you use this in solid surface? To put two pieces together and hold it till an adhesive line dries, where you can't get clamps in. Well, I think the problem. You know, just just thinking about that. You the know? only problem would be one: the color is well, really a yeah, bright red. Right. The other thing too is because this is meant to put pressure, it's actually going to expand. The, remember, it's a plastic, so it's plastic pushing against plastic. This would tend to push the plastic up. And the ridges which could have a hard time stress. So digging right. into yeah, surface. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd feel comfortable. However, they that. do use that on that composite trim board. So on outside, we sell a lot of those for composite trim. The, the AZAC is the big name, but there's one called Advanced Trim Works, and there's a bunch of other ones where they're going to they're gonna do a column wrap, and they, they don't want anything to be shown. This is expensive trim on right. high-end houses. They'll join that. They'll, they'll use a biscuit, and they, they use an adhesive to join this trim right. together, and this biscuit will hold it all together while it dries. Oh, so they don't have to come okay. back to the person's house and pick up clamps. 
These are new. I've never seen these before. That's Lamello's newest invention. That's the Fixo biscuit. You know, they're probably the only people in the world that have engineers dedicated to advancing biscuit joinery, right? Everyone else. Can you imagine having a full time job just thinking about how to make I a make new biscuits. Oh, <laughs> well, you're right. a baker? No, no, no. <laughs> But if you lived in Switzerland, you'd love it. You'd, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you'd just, be proud. You'd go I'll to the bar the and tell everybody and, you know. about it. Mountains and the cows yeah. and all that stuff. This is the same thing, just a different configuration? Correct. That can join taller pieces of the thinner. This is more for a flat surface. So in the case, in the case of, we'll, we'll do one next. Well, yeah. This would be for this type of a joint, and that's the tall one for this type of a joint. Uh -huh. Okay, so okay. we'll see that in just a minute. We've already done we'll a couple samples you. earlier before the show. Okay, well, so what you can be assured of is if you buy a Lamello tool, then by seeing this, the tool really isn't going to go obsolete because Lamello is constantly working to expand the application of the tool. Correct. So yeah. that's, that's one reason to feel confident about buying a Lamello tool versus some knockoff made in a third world country. Right. Not well, quite this tool good actually good seems tool. to do more than a lot of the imitations do that just do biscuit joining, and that's it. That's also correct. Okay, all right. right. So, so there's a reason that you're buying the Cadillac, if you will, of tools for top of the line. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Not everybody has all of these. Not all of the knockoffs have six different depth settings before the duplex hinges, the simplex hinges, you know, the H9s, the S6s, which is the biggest one. Right. Zeros, tens, twenties. Everyone has zeros, tens, twenties, but a lot of the ancillary stuff, they don't. Um, they don't have the cutter that we're going to show people in the next. Yeah, that's right. Okay, well, let, okay well, let's go ahead and let's, let's watch this tool work. Um, now, this is the biscuit joiner. Correct. So, so some of the features about this tool are what? Let's check the plug before we go too deep here. All right, safety first. So you didn't do that before the show. <laughs> That's why I, I did it. What happened? You got problems, don't yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> I'm not a professional at this uh, microphone thing. But anyways, okay. The main, the number one advantage of our of our of our machine is it's we like to call it the only industrial grade biscuit joiner. All of the components that are critical to accuracy are machined. Okay, not cast, not forged. And this is all one machined piece. So the ways and the base in the slide system are all machined on the same CNC mm. machining centers out of, in this case, one piece of steel. Like a fine in this swift case, watch. Exactly. One piece, not, not cast, machined, one piece. Okay? Wow. Okay. So when all of this stuff is put together, well, other other machines, you'll see that the slides are bolted onto the base, or they have a plastic base. Now, also, before you put this on, like that. there's a, a really impressive scale right here on the side. Um, you know, once again, not stamped or anything like that, but, I mean, a, a really nice scale right there. Yeah. And then on this side is the adjustment knob, and I noticed it has, you know, 0, 10, and then it has a couple other things, an S, a D. What, what's that about? S stands for our simplex, which is our knockdown. D. Oh, okay. Is so it's automatic setting. Correct. Oh, cool. Okay, so you don't have to guess. You don't have to guess. All right. D stands for duplex, which is the name of our hinge. You'll actually see some of the other biscuit joiners have copied the S and D setting, even though they don't know what it does. They don't. They, they may not know it stands for <laughs> simplex or duplex, but they know. So and then, the, there you still have. You're still stuck buying Lamello parts, even if you buy the Lamello. If you don't buy the Lamello machine, you may. <laughs> you may. Um, the scale has detents at your common angles. Right. Okay. And you're right. Everything in here is fine. Now it has really a nice full nice. scale right here on the front too. Correct. Which you can get that an inch or metric. And, and, of course, that interacts totally here with, with this kind of shelving indexing. Correct. And I'll this show is the you center line, I'm assuming, the way your cut's going to take place? This here? Yes. Every, everything on here has, <laughs> has a, centering, uh, a center line set up here. Okay. One of the neat features is it's just one thumb screw to attach and change the cutter. Okay. So that's all I did when I popped this off. Now that's, okay. that's in there ready to go. Okay. The machine is... is Ready to work with half inch, uh, sorry, three quarter. You slip on the plate, and it's half inch. Oh wow! So you don't have to do any adjusting. You don't have to do any adjusting for those two. If you right. want to do something bigger, 
that's when you go with the fence. Okay. Okay. Right. So if you want to do... But your common materials are going to be half and three quarters. Correct. But if you want to do one and a half, two inch, and you want to center or something like that, you can... That's okay. what this fence is for. Mm -hmm. If you look at any of the tests that have been done in the magazines, fine woodwork and all them, the, the accuracy of the machine is very, very, very close to zero. And compared wow. to the other machines, it's, it's not, there's no comparison. Same with the fence. This is on a dovetail slide. So when you slide this up and down and you, you snap it into place, that squares everything. Okay, so, these so you're are not things spending time trying to adjust it to get it lined up. It will automatically self-align itself. Correct. And it will go up and down fast. Okay, no, no dial to worry about rack and pinion dialing it up and down. It's up and down fast, and it's dead, not square. It's nice because some of the other ones, you kind of, you, you know, they jam as you're going down because they're not as precision. Right. It, you know, it, it costs money to machine a little dovetail in here. But, right. but the big thing is, once again, you think of the shop, you think of production, everything that anybody that has done time studies, right. every minute you save two, three Plus minutes a, lot of a day. Guys just like having the best tools. Yeah. Yeah, Correct. You know, I mean, that's who wants it, junk. Exactly. Right. right. It's it's definitely a show off tool. Yep. You know, people will buy it just. We'll to show it off. Let's, let's run it. Let's see. Let's see it do what something. What are we going to run? All right. This do we is, have a board we're putting on here. Yeah. Ooh. Let's let's make a fixo biscuit so everyone can see the new the newest invention, the fixo. Okay. Let's plug it in first. Yeah. All right, on the floor, right, right there, right behind you. All right. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's all right. Yeah, we'll make a fixo joint first. This is the top a 20. Fixo joint. That sounds yeah. like a, a Superman Bizarro. Uh. This is a slim motor. <laughs> if you pick that up compared to other <clears throat> machines, it's a lot easier on, you, on your hand. It's, very, it's slim. Yeah, it lets the dust fall right out, too. Yeah, well, that's one of the big advantages of, the, of being able to change the cutter so fast. You mm -hmm. loosen it up like this each day, and you can take all the blow it all out, the out. out. Right, yep. blow the dust out. Okay, now on this, though, now on, a, on something this wide, you probably want to put uh, two of the uh, biscuits in, right? The fixo biscuits, and all we've done is just made a ninety degree fence here just to hold this at ninety until we go ahead and put it in. Correct, it's just a jig. Right, someone might have it in a shop. Yeah, and a something fixture. that wide in the case now, of fixo, sure. Is this millimeters? <clears throat> so you set it to twenty millimeter cut? Um, no. Okay. That's the number twenty biscuit. biscuit. Okay. Right. All right. So the so number that's ten. Nice. Everything's would related be a number, to the yeah. biscuits. Correct. Right. And number then number 10, 10 is the number 10 biscuit. Number okay. 0 is the number 0 biscuit. Okay, great. All of that was, you know, developed by LaMelo. It's standard biscuit talk now. Okay. You know, regardless of who you are. I don't know standard biscuit talk. So. Well, I like, <laughs> you I like, you know, I okay. like powder biscuits. All right. So All right. What are we going to do here? We're going to turn this machine on and we're going to make some talk. Now, you were right. There's a center line. I see that. So that's lining right up on the joint. Correct. Yep, we opened it up. All right, now get us some fixes. Okay, the so the slide action is smooth. It's consistent every time you make a slot. So what you can see is we've cut parallel. two slots in the wood. They're perfectly aligned because they were cut at the same time. Now the great thing about the fisco, the, the fixo biscuit is it actually pulls it together, correct? Correct. Is there, a, is there an angle built into this? They're similar to the to the red biscuit. There are barbs so that it stays oh, in. Right. There's actually a ridge on it with a little and there's curve. a curve which is going to pull the piece together. Very cool. Okay, so you can have a gap here of half a <coughs> millimeter and it'll pull it together. All right. This reminds me very much of the bow tie machines. Yes. It's so it's doing a similar operation. It does a similar operation, but if you own a biscuit joiner, all, okay. right, all you have to do is buy biscuits. You don't need so to buy another Now, machine. if we were using our LK machine, we would have glued that joint first. Correct. And then once we had the glue in the joint, then we would have just fixed these back together, tapped those in, and essentially, you can see, we would have been done. It's a nice, tight joint. It's, sm it's uh, smooth and clean. Uh, once again, if it were glued together, I guess it's let the glue dry and you go ahead and finish all this up. That's the point, right? The fixos are really designed to pull the joint together and hold it together while the glue dries. Glue provides the strength. So now that, doing that's something a simple like this one. has got to be a real pain, though, isn't it? I don't know. Look, I got the answer right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I see yeah. that. But, yeah, but how do you hold this thing together and put that machine on here and all that? Let's do it. All at one time. Let's do it. Okay. Show me. 
Show me the tool. Put it down. <laughs> All right. In the case of these, okay, we're going to put a slot in both sides of this at the same time. Okay. All right. This I just set to 45, which okay. I happen so, to know is that So what up. we're going to do is these blocks are lined up like that, and you're going to okay. cut can a we, slot. Can we turn this a little bit so even, viewers even. can see it or no? Sure. Here, let me just do this. We'll just put this. There we go. Get this out of the way so they can see this, because this has okay. got to be pretty interesting. Okay, okay, go ahead and show us what you can do. All right, let's see what our, what our reach can is. Can you reach there without getting in front of the camera? Yeah, I can reach. Okay. Now, on all of our pieces, all of our fences have a center mark and side marks to reference. So normally most people are going to reference off the center of either the base, the flip fence, the slip-on plate. Oh, and that's all the transferred down fence, onto there. Right, they all have all right. a centering mark. You can't move that side to side. So okay. That's, that gives us easy alignment. Yeah, but, you know, you have to make a sacrifice for the viewers sometimes, <laughs> you know? I thought this was all canned. I don't know if you drive. It's so simple. Alright, now we got to find some... A couple of the half moon, there's half one up on top. Half moon hinges. Half moons, got right it. Here. There's one. Got them both, right here. All right. Now let's get here. Let's put this where we can. Here, let's get this yeah, out of the way a second. These guys. So just, yeah. Yep. So same concept, just in the re in the other in the other direction. Oh wow. Pulls the whole joint together. You don't have to worry about alignment. And it's perfect. <laughs> That's clean nice. on the outside and then on the inside. So for cabinet bases, would be that. Oh, yeah. That's fantastic. Now, you could almost um, do something like this knockdown and just supply these pre cut and then just have the customer hammer those in. Hammer the fix those in. Yeah. Sure. That's pretty cool. Okay, well. We've got to go to break. Yeah, this is. Uh, and right after we come back, we have got a really cool tool to show. We like cool tools. John is going to go line up against that, and we're going to see if he can catch it. I'm going to throw that at the end of the show with that piece of wood and see well, if I can Well, I thought you were going to catch it with your teeth. No. We'll okay. be back in we'll a minute. We'll be back in a few minutes. This is called Strike Hold, and this was, uh, it's, it, it cleans, lubricates, and protects, as it says. But it's just, it's an amazing product. I have never seen anything like this. Um, you know, I don't even think it's up on our website, but it will be tomorrow. It is... It's it just, does everything. It's just amazing. It does everything. It, does everything. It, it, it cleans, it lubricates. We had the, the threads on our uh, planer were rusted, and we had to open it up to six inches, which you normally wouldn't do, and we sprayed it down with this stuff, and in 10 minutes it had eaten through all the rust, and it worked just perfectly. The I know, um, just, just by way of, I do quite a bit of shooting, and I took, and I read that you could use this for guns. Right. And I sprayed it down the bore of one of my pistols, and I was amazed. It immediately cleaned the bore out. Yeah. Unlike any other product, um, it actually goes through the water. Other products like uh, PB Blaster and things like that, if you fill them in a cup of water, they lay on top of the surface and they do nothing. If you actually put this in, this goes through the water and will eat a styrofoam cup like that. How long does this last, though? I'm curious. It, if it lasts for five months on a, uh, on a, uh, a non-moving part. So it'll, it'll uh, waterproof for five months like an electrical connection or things like that. But if it's something that's moving all the time, you want to just keep spraying it on a regular basis to keep it protected. <clears throat> now what we're going to do is very simply, we're going to spray. Oh, you're a chicken is what you, we did this earlier. Well, <laughs> you know, I mean, well, you know, all you do is you spray the surface good, okay, like that. And then you spray anything that's going to be <laughs> Let me get <laughs> that won't Let's, take the finish we'll, off we'll, of her chair, will we'll it? Spray the light bulb too. All right. Now you screw the light bulb together. And I'm just going to show you a simple test of this. You're going to see a really neat demonstration of this when the manufacturer comes in. So we have this. All right. Now this is regular water here, just like nothing special about it. And we're actually going to take that and drop it in the water. Are we going to go offset? Okay. Look at that. Look at that. Can you believe that? Can you stick your finger in that water? Um, no. 
Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that amazing? <laughs> All right, so, and then, then you could just take it apart. Now look at this. Watch this. A little bit of water on there. Here we go. Ready? Ready? thought we were going to have that. an Alcatraz moment. Look at that. I mean, can you believe that? I mean, that is absolutely amazing. Hmm. <laughs> so imagine, so imagine like, um, you know, like let's say your car, you know, if you drive an old clunker or something, and every time it rains, it runs bad. Just spray down the spark plug wires, distributor cap, all of that stuff with this, and it'll protect it for five months. Well, it's now, just, big thing, and, and you and I had talked about this. For all of you guys that are, are, are field carpenters, uh, right. you all know, framers, oh, business yeah. guys, all yeah. that, if you take and you think of uh, your tools that rust, the uh, chucks on your drill. Yep. Um, just spray uh, down everything router, in your toolbox you know, with this stuff. Router bit shafts, saw blades. Yep. Um, once again, all your tools, all the contact points, everything that deteriorates from, especially humidity down here in Florida, Absolutely. all yeah. along the Gulf Coast. But you know, any anybody involved in the marine it's industry, uh, amazing. carpenters, uh, farmers. If the lights go out, folks, you know what happens. <laughs> I mean, he couldn't leave that. well that, enough alone. You know, I you know I just wonder. You know, when we when don't we, try this at home, by the way. Right. Not unless you have this. When we yeah right. Um, when we do this on our on our show, when we actually get into doing this, I think maybe we'll see if we can put some goldfish in that bowl, and then show that there's no electrical discharge at all. Wouldn't that be cool? I think it'd be cool if you put your butt foot in a bucket of water. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, just amazing.